Council of Nicaea took up Athanasius's position and championed St. Athanasius against Arius and his followers. The Council declared itself firmly opposed to the idea that the Son was a creature, and therefore not God. The Council made a solemn declaration, and what we call technically a, a definition, and I'll quote its exact words here, and you might find them very familiar. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, generated from the Father, that is from the being of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. So that's from the Council of Nicaea, and those words found their, their way into the profession of faith that we have today. It's that important. What Nicaea decreed was that without equivocation is that the Christian faith is that Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, is himself divine. He is God and he shares the being of the Father, that is, being God. Now one thing that's theologically important about Nicaea is, is the imagery that's used generated from the Father. So there is a Father-Son relationship there. He's generated from the being of the Father, so they share the same being, that is the same divine essence. The Council then says, light from light, true God from true God. Why does it say light from light? It's because the, the, the physics of the time, in, in a pre-modern scientific world, thought that light was immaterial. So, what Nicaea was doing there was taking up the position of St. Athanasius and saying that to understand God and to understand the relationship between the Father and the Son, we have to go beyond the material or the organic when we consider God. And that's why I think Nicaea has a great lesson for us today. We have to take the same care as the Council did when we talk about the Father and the Son. As St. Athanasius explains, we cannot think of God as a material body, because bodies that have the same substance, such as two human beings, can separate from one another. But the relationship of the Son and the Father, God the Son, God the, the Father, that relationship is completely different. The Son is begotten or generated from the Father in a way that's altogether different from human generation. Because while the Son is of the same essence or substance as the Father, he cannot be divided from the Father. And I think that's, that's one of the important implications of the statement in John's Gospel, when Jesus says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. In terms of dogma, in terms of doctrine, Nicaea is important and Athanasius is important for affirming that Jesus is in fact divine. But theologically, that is in terms of the reasoning behind this dogma, is that Athanasius and Nicaea tell us that if, we are think, if we're thinking about God, we have to go beyond our human language. We have to go beyond our human concepts because those concepts are bound to what we can sensibly experience. In other words, when we think about God, we have to go beyond the things that are material, things that are bound to space and time. As Athanasius says, and I'll quote him here, we must transcend the senses utterly and understand spiritually what is true of God. Now it's important to note that Athanasius said that we have to transcend the senses, not ignore them. When we think of God as Father and Son, we are using an image we have from the realm of the sensible. And so we can use this image in a worthwhile manner, so long as we can realize that the divine reality goes beyond this sensible image. In a previous video on theological method, I spoke about the use of analogy in theology, and I spoke about the principles of affirmation negation and eminence 
to which Aquinas makes reference. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to go to that video and explore what we mean by analogical understanding of God. But essentially, Athanasius was doing what Aquinas formulated hundreds of years later when he affirmed, negated, and made a statement of eminence. In plain English, Athanasius and the Council of Nicaea taught that God is like father and son, as we know the relationship of a father and son. But God is not a father and son as we know it, because the way that we know the father-son relationship has human, mortal, finite limits. That is, God is more than father and son as we know it. God super exceeds, God is super eminent, God is greater than what we know about the human relationship of a parent and child. So I'll commend that to you, the, the story of Arius, Athanasius and the Council of Nicaea. In a future video I'm going to talk about the Nestorian heresy and the Council of Ephesus and the Monophysite heresy and the Council of Chalcedon. I look forward to sharing that with you online.